encourage you to keep your Bibles open there to the final chapter of the book of Hebrews as we conclude our study of Hebrews this morning. A few things that I would want you to take note of. First of all, have a copy of your Bible study outline. This is found each week at the back of our weekly newsletter here at the Waters Road Church of Christ. Or if you prefer to use technology this morning, you can scan the QR code and access our digital sermon notes as well. Either way, I want to encourage you to follow along and take notes as we conclude this study together. This morning, we're going to consider the final four ways in which God has called us to practically live out our faith within a broken world. Now, our first three ways, if you were not with us last Lord's Day morning, we looked last Lord's Day morning together just how important it is in a world full of broken hearts, broken marriages, and broken finances that we all exhibit sincere love for one another, that we flee from those things which dishonor marriage, and we avoid all forms of materialism. Now, why were these first three things so important? Well, we found out because they are truly the three most visible forms of our Christianity. And these first things will allow the world to see whether or not Christ is authentically living in our hearts. But there are many things in this life that we are enticed by this world to pursue. So many sources of knowledge and wisdom. And it's important as we grow in the faith and as we strive to be the church that God has called us to be, that we live out our faith in this broken world dependent upon only one source of wisdom and information. And if we're truly to be authentically Christian, that source of information is going to be only God's Word. And that brings us to the first point of our time together this morning quickly. This will be number four overall in the seven things. Our first one of today, and that is, again, only follow God's Word. Now, you may say, Jonathan, I have made the choice in my life, the choice to follow Jesus Christ. And I say to you, if that's your choice, you've made the best choice in your life that you could possibly ever make. But let me ask you this morning, how do we know of Jesus Christ? How do we learn of His footsteps? The source and the only source is God's Word. In fact, let's look back what Mark read for us this morning, chapter 13 and verse number 7. It says, remember your leaders, those who spoke to you, and notice how he qualifies this, who spoke to you the Word of God. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. I'm also reminded of what Paul told the church in Ephesus. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13, Paul says, And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some teachers and pastors to equip the saints for the work of the ministry to build up the body of Jesus Christ until we all reach the unity of the faith and in the knowledge of God's Son. In other words, in this life, you are going to have some, let's look at that first idea, evangelists. And that is any one of us in this room this morning who are striving in our lives to share the truth of the gospel. You have some pastors and teachers. You have all these different things. You're going to have pastors. Folks, that is our shepherds right here at the Waters Road Church of Christ. They're also known as elders or, or presbyters in the Bible. You're going to have teachers. That's anyone that is proclaiming the Word of God. If, and notice that's a big qualifier, right? If, if they're doing it faithfully, what are we supposed to do in return? We're supposed to follow the Lord and follow their example. 
And if they are truly living by faith, you are to pattern your lives after these people as they pattern their lives after Jesus Christ. See, church, God, the Word of God, the Bible, that is God's handbook. It is God's owner's manual of your life. And it only makes sense that if you will follow the Lord and follow His Word, God says that you will experience human flourishing. You will be filled with joy and blessing in life. And let me tell you, you may not believe that, but all the statistics that are out there today prove it to be true, that the happiest, most content, and joyful people in life are those who follow after Jesus Christ. Let me give you an example of that. Back during the pandemic, at the worst part of the pandemic, Pew Research did a study, and the group of people within American society that did not experience more depression, there was no other group than Christians who suffered less depression than the rest of our country. Why do you think that is? I can tell you why it is. It's not that we are people who live without any heartache. It's not because we are people that have no difficulties or that we're perfect. No, we live in a broken world, right? Is this heaven? No. But the fact is, by following Jesus Christ and His Word, you will have more purpose in life, you will have more meaning in life, and we're going to have more significance in our lives because we pattern our lives after Jesus Christ, and that gives you hope even in the darkest occasions of your life. And from Genesis to Revelation, the primary message of God stands out, and that message is Jesus Christ. And what did Hebrews tell us? Look at verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ is the same what? Say it, congregation. Yesterday, today, and forever. And what's really interesting, though, there are fads in our culture. I don't see a lot of people wearing bell-bottom jeans today. I know they tried to bring that bike back, right, ladies? They tried to bring back bell-bottom jeans. There are fads in our culture with clothing and culture and all different sorts of things. Did you know that affects the church as well? I mean, there are churches on every corner with various flavors and emphasis, and they all, they all advertise that they are here to serve your every need, right? Every church out there. I've never seen a church that says, hey, come to church here because we'll let you down. No, they all say the same thing. We're here to serve your every need. And a lot of us, we base on where we go to church on what's on the sign outside the church. And if it says Christ in it, a lot of us say, that's where I want to be. Folks, it doesn't matter what's on the sign. If Christ ain't in this church, you are not going to be built up in the body of Christ. The main thing has got to be Jesus. If we're not careful, though, we lose our focus. And whenever you get off God's Word and you get your focus off of Jesus Christ, then what's going to happen is this particular passage tells us we're going to wander off into false teaching. Look at the next verse. Do not be led away by diverse and strange teaching. That's right, even in the first century, not very far removed from Jesus Christ himself, even in the first century, there were these Jewish Christians who were beginning to fall into one of the isms. It just happens to be, in this case, it was legalism. But the point of it all is that if you're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ, that means that you need to be only devoted to him and his word. Number five. Take the gospel outside. 
far too long in my lifetime, and maybe in your lifetime as well. The mindset of many of our churches has been, well, if we build a nice enough building and we schedule the worship services at the right time, then the lost folks are going to beat down the doors to get in this auditorium. You know what I mean? Has that worked? But the writer of Hebrews tells us there is a very good reason for us to take the gospel of Jesus outside these four walls and into this world. Look at verse number 12. It tells us that Jesus also suffered outside the gate in order to sanctify the people through his own blood. Now, this is one of the most obscure verses in Hebrews, and it often gets overlooked. But folks, whenever Jesus was crucified, he was crucified outside the gates of Jerusalem. He was literally outside the camp. But can I tell you, that is just typical of Jesus' ministry. When you think about it, Jesus never fit in anybody's camp, did he? Not politically, not religiously, not socially. Why? Because Jesus had one mission, and that mission was to seek and save the lost. And he was always interacting with those on the outside. Here's what I love about Jesus. He was just as comfortable having a meal with tax collectors and sinners as he was with religious leaders. Because he looked at everybody equally. About us. We are commanded by God to bring the message of Jesus Christ outside of this camp. Verse 13, therefore, let us go to him outside the camp. You see, Jesus is already out there. We've got to go out there and bear the reproach that he endured, for we have no lasting city. Let me ask you this morning, do you have any relationships with Christ with anyone outside of these four walls? Do you have any relationships with this lost world? If you don't, maybe that's a problem. I was thinking about this earlier this week. If you died tomorrow, would any non-Christians come to be part of your funeral? Any neighbors? Any co-workers? Let me tell you, I don't want to see the Waters Road Church of Christ become a country club for comfortable Christians. I don't want us to be a place where you can come just to get a few inspiring words from a sermon. No, we are a sending agency out into this world. That's what we are here to do. It's interesting, I remember as a child, and those of you who have been part of the church most of your life will know what I'm about to say. At the end of our services, our brothers typically lead what is called a closing prayer. And at the end of that closing prayer, there's a famous phrase, whether you lived in Alabama or Texas or Tennessee or Florida or Georgia, somehow it got around everywhere. And that is, Father, bring us back. Say it with me, at the what? Isn't that amazing? And I guarantee you, we'd go to the church of Christ right down the street, and they'd know the same saying. I remember as a young teenager, that statement seemed odd to me. Because I, as a teenager, it began to dawn on me, what are we doing between Monday and Sunday? Maybe our prayer ought to be not, Lord, bring us back in the next appointed time. But Lord, help us this week as we go out of this lost and dying world so that by next Sunday we can bring somebody with us. Not just us, bring somebody with us. Number six. 
sacrificially worship the Lord. Now, if you've been with us throughout this study of Hebrews, and let me say thank you, first of all, to any of you who have been with us for a majority of this series. If you've been with us for any amount of time, you, you know that in the Old Testament, any time a person would come to worship God in the temple, they would always bring what with them? Do you remember? They would always bring an animal sacrifice. How many of you, listen church, how many of you brought with you this morning, how many of you brought an animal sacrifice with you this morning? No, I'm not talking about your husband. We didn't. We didn't bring any. Because Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. But look at verse 15. What does it say? Through Jesus, Him, then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of our lips that acknowledge His name. When we came together this morning to worship God, that is the reason why we do it each and every Sunday. That's why we spend the first half of our worship time together praising God in song, praying together, sharing communion, giving of our means. But folks, examine verse 15 very carefully with me for just a moment. Look, first of all, it says what? Two words, through Him. Who's the Him? That's Jesus. That means that you and I didn't come here today out of our own accord. Now, every Sunday we come through Him, Jesus Christ. Next phrase, what does it say? Let us. That means that our worship is to be done in a community. But this contradicts our individualistic society that says, Jonathan, I don't need to be a part of church in order to worship God. No, God says right here, I want it to be done in a community. And you and I need to be part of that community. Amen? Next phrase. Continually offer up. That means this needs to be done on a regular basis, ongoing. And then what? A sacrifice of praise to God. Worship on this earth has but one audience, and that one audience is right now in heaven. And all of our worship should be directed to Him, Jesus Christ. What about this sacrifice of praise? We sung that song, right? We bring a sacrifice of praise, right? Did you know there's a second sacrifice that we are to lift up before God? It is the sacrifice of giving offering. Look at verse 16. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. For such sacrifices are pleasing to God. That means whether it's in this room or outside these four walls, we are to be generous people, generous to the kingdom of God, generous to those outside the kingdom. We bring a sacrifice of praise to the house of the Lord, and we also take a sacrifice outside of these four walls as well. Number seven, lift up your spiritual leaders. It's amazing that as we kind of conclude the book of Hebrews, that this is the final way that the author tells us we are to live out our faith based here in Hebrews chapter 13. But it says once again, we are to lift up the spiritual leadership within our churches. Now, as a preacher, I've got to admit, 17 is one of those verses that you kind of want to skip over because preaching this honestly can sound a little self-serving to those who hear it. But the deal is this, God has established in his church means of which reaching and touching hearts with this world. And I hope you believe that. And in his sovereignty, as we read earlier, he's risen up evangelists, 
teachers and preachers, and spiritual leaders. And he's also brought up elders to oversee and to shepherd and lead the church and all of us as Christians. To make it a point in our lives to lift up the spiritual leaders among us. And by the way, folks, to be a spiritual leader here at Waters Road, you don't have to have an official title, do you? Verse 17. Obey your leaders and submit to them. For they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. When I read that verse, it reminds me, over the last 45 years of my life, I've never known an elder or a preacher or a teacher or a Christian who has been absolutely perfect. How many of you have known someone who was absolutely, completely perfect? I know myself. I'm far from perfect. But, listen to me, when you know that somebody is humbly seeking to lead you based upon God's Word, the Bible says that you are to support those people. Not only support them, but follow them. Not only follow them, but verse 18, as Mark Reddus tells us, we are to Pray for them as well. And notice he says, pray for us. That is plural, not singular. It's not follow your leader. It's follow the leaders, right? Why? Because we have a plurality of leaders within the Lord's church. We don't, you may come from a different religious background and you may come here to Waters Road. We don't have a, a pastor. We have pastors. We have elders. They're presbyters. They are our shepherds. I am thankful to say this morning, this is not the Jonathan Sanford show. This is not the Charles Davis show. It's not the Phil Gabbard show. It's not the Cliff Thompson show. It's not any of us singularly being their name, their show. Folks, this is God's place. God's family. And I'm thankful that God set up the leadership within the church the way he did. Because when we've watched our world, the way the world has tried to lead the church, what is the old saying? Absolute power corrupts absolutely. God knew what he was doing. All right, based on Hebrews 13, these are the seven ways that you as a Christian are to live out your faith in a broken and dying world. So my final question, what are you going to do with all this? It's been one of the most challenging series I've ever had to preach. I can tell you we've had many conversations over the last, how long has it been, nine months? Thank you for allowing me to share God's word with you this morning. Now we want to give back to you. There's a way that we can assist any of you, whether it's prayer, whether you have a need in your life that you want to cry out to God and you want us to cry out with you, whether you want to begin your relationship with God through Jesus Christ immediately putting him on in baptism. We want to be here for you. We can also meet with you privately. If you have a need you want to pray privately about after we're done, please seek myself or Guy or one of our shepherds or someone you trust. We can help you at all. Come now. This